It's coding time with Clever Coding. Today we're going to be finishing up our previous topic which were conditionals with an example and also starting for loops and one of my favorites where you really get the advantage of using programming. So by starting first we're going to uh, I'm going to be highlighting out that why you should learn my series uh, with three basic points. First of all, it's absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything. Second, it's beginners friendly. I'm I'm basically doing it for all from the start. So it's absolute for absolute beginners and for those who want to revise their concepts. So you, this is the best place for you. And third, if you have any kind of problem, you should please comment down in these video sections so that you could like ask your questions and I'll be available, I'll try to be available for your answers and hope that your problems will be solved. And we'll try to make a community guys, so we could do this together. So without, with that being said, let's start. Uh, so we're gonna include our header file. A little typo over there and now over here okay so that's done let me save this to uh, uh, my the same folder what I need C++ there you go over here we're gonna make it as uh, well this is a calculator example work we're, we're just gonna call it grade calculator because we're making a grade calculator so the this uh, we've already learned conditionals and this will it be implemented using conditionals and also some of the basic concepts we've discussed earlier. So first of all, we're gonna have mar marks as a variable and it's just gonna initialize it as zero. Just a good programming practice, and then I'm gonna get input for the marks. So let's say marks, and then we could say if marks are less than fifty. And then we could display on the console something like fail. Okay, I know it's like a little mean. Uh, else, if now next is marks less. Than, uh, now marks will be greater than equal. Uh, well, yeah, greater than equal to fifty. And now this new sign over here is called the and operator, and we denote it using two ampersand signs. And you might learn this in math where when we do conditionals, I mean logical reasoning, uh, both of the condition the cases have to be true in order for the statement block to execute. So over here it says, uh, let me just write this down first, uh, that I'm going to give a D. Oops, a little, oh man. Okay, so if, if it's greater than 50, if it's equaling or greater than 50, and if it's less than 60, you get a D. So it, if these both conditions are true, then this D will be executed. Now else if, same like this, we're gonna add some more. Greater than or equal to 60, and the same marks, which is less than 70. This is C. Then I'll say marks greater than seventy and marks less than eighty. Get B string. Forgot that. And then I'll say. So this else if is basically, uh, if I'm revising all the concepts, uh, it's only going to check if all those other conditions are false. So uh, 80 and marks are less than 90. Now this is some strict school. Even if you're in between 80 and 90, you're still not going to, uh, uh, you're going to get an A. So that's not like strict, but you get the point. So else. Now this is the last condition. If you get above 90, you know what you're going to get? You're going to get an A+. Plus. So we say A+. Plus. Now, that's the end of our code. And this is basically a simple grade calculator where 
you're gonna input your marks out of 100 and it's gonna tell if it's above if it's if it's gonna be like less than 50 you're gonna get fail if it's in between 60 and 50 or D and if it's in between 60 and 70 C if it's in between 70 and 80 B and if it's in between 80 and 90 A and the last one if it's not all of these conditions it's gonna be an A plus so if I save this code and execute compile and run it's gonna give you a black terminal screen and uh, I didn't display anything in the output so you're not gonna see anything in the output but if I, for instance if I enter something like 75 now uh, my condition was that if it was 75 it had to show a B now let's see if it shows a B so it does show a B that's not good let's make our code a little better by uh, sh displaying some c text in the console screen by throwing out C out and saying enter your marks and then in line right here okay now save it and then execute once again compile and run and now it says enter your marks and I basically enter something like 90 now for 90 it was an A plus oh because over here if it was less than 90 it was gonna get an A so it's not touching 90 because it's not equal over here so if I for instance write 91 I mean 89 you're gonna see an A so 89 there's an A so that was our uh, basic program and now we're gonna be starting our loops one of my favorites so the loops by uh, there are two types of loops in programming one is the for loop and the other is the while loop okay so we could we use both but the basic difference between the while and the for loop is that the while is used when you don't know how many times you have to implement that piece of logic. Uh, you're, you're not sure that how many times it has to run. Uh, and then the for loop is used when you know exactly how many times the loop has to be executed. Now for some basic concept we're going to start with for loop. So for loop syntax is as simple like for and then these parentheses and inside these parentheses you're going to put integer i is equal to zero so i just started by declaring an integer i and this is how you declare something you have to declare something inside this is called the uh, the iterator and then after that there's a condition so basically if i could say i is less than or equal to fifth ten and then i put another semicolon and this is called the increment or decrement so this is the uh, iteration, iterate, iterating variable, the condition, and then the increment, or you can have a decrement. And these minus minus indicates if it's it's going to be minus one, and plus plus indicates it's going to be plus one. So if I, for instance, write C out, uh, and I'll write I, you're going to see that it's going to start from zero. And then it's going to end line, go to one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if I execute, compile, and run, you're going to see zero to ten. So you're going to see zero to ten executed on the terminal screen. That was fast. We didn't have to type that much stuff. So that's why uh, I love loops. They help you, they ease you out by not typing that much, and that's just not letting that complexity come to you. And now we could like, uh, one, ten is just so simple. You could have a thousand too, or you could have a more than that and you know computers are super fast they're gonna calculate things really easy so there you go without even typing 1000 numbers printed on my screen from 0 to 1000 and now we could have you know something instead of numbers we could also have text you know like sometimes uh, you get punishments in schools and and the teacher used to like in old days the teacher used to make as a punishment for the student to write uh, I'm sorry on the uh, chalkboard or wherever it was back then like a thousand times or whatever so we could just write a program by saying I'm sorry uh, and then we could just like endline it or if it's better to just give it a space and then like make it spaced because that looks a little more realistic and now if I execute this compile and run you're gonna see I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry super fast it gen generated and you you're not even you're not even sweating so that was awesome 
Now that you could uh, imagine how much power you have in your hands right now. You have a lot of power, bro. If you're a programmer, you have a lot of power. Okay, now the other loop is the while loop. So we're basically gonna check out what's the di difference and what you're gonna expect. So this is the basic syntax of the while loop. You have a while, you have a parentheses, and then you have curly braces. So what do you put in the parentheses? You put a condition. You could also uh, do something like this. First, in, uh, you have to declare that iterating variable before the while expression, not like the for loop where you had to declare it inside the parentheses. So for instance, if I have an iteration variable as i, and that's the convention for mostly every single programmer around there in the world that use i as a iterating variable or j, you're gonna see something like that a lot. So if I have like something like integer i is equal to one, and I say i is less than, I mean, sorry, less than 10. And then you're gonna see uh, c out, console output, I'm gonna print, guess uh, the same thing, i. And I'm gonna put an end line, whatever it is. And then the increment is also have to be added manually. So I'm, I'm incrementing myself over here. Suppose I didn't have an increment over here, what would happen? Now the condition will never be false, uh, like you guessed it, and then it would never end, the loop won't end. And then this would continuously run forever and ever and ever and ever. You could see my, uh, my like squirrel ball moving down, and you could see these numbers are not even stopping, non-stop numbers. And this is just uh, making my PC a little bad too. So I'm not, I'm executing that, terminating it out, and I'm putting an increment, turn information over here so that it terminates after it reaches 9 not 10 because uh, i is less than 10 yeah so it's only going to reach from 1 to 9 and you're going to see now if i save this execute compile and run you're going to see 1 to 9 so what if i want that blast off thing you know like that's fun if i have 10 and then you have i is greater than equal to 1 uh, and then you, you know, I'm on, I'm on zero because you know it's zero. And then you're gonna you have a decrement over here now, so that i is gonna be decremented. And over here we're gonna have like a prompt that says blast off like a rocket ship. So there you go. Save it out and now execute and check that out. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, blast off! There you go, guys. You have a code written for NASA. Now you are a NASA engineer. Uh, just joking over there. We have a long way to go. But this was a good start. Hope you liked this one. Now, see you in the next one. Bye!